What's going on guys? Today we're working on a solid state drive made by Kingston. It's an A400 SSD. This unit belongs to an owner of a restaurant and uh, the entire business is on this SSD. It's an old machine, SATA SSD. Hopefully we can capture what they need off of it because quick tests that I've already done on this SSD show that it had degraded heavily over a short period of time. So the clock is running out on this thing and uh, what's gonna happen is kind of unpredictable. I've seen cases where similar devices in this condition pull out through the whole case and with attempts to reread defects, we obtain close to perfect recovery. But I've also seen cases where they come in and they look strong, but because how quickly these SSDs begin to degrade, uh, we don't even get a chance to capture the image on the initial phase, uh, not even getting into the defects, rereading and stuff like that. So uh, it's going to be interesting for me to find out how far this thing can go, whether or not we can capture it, especially uh, that uh, they really do need this data uh, the, as quickly as possible. So we'll be probably trying to work with folders, getting access to the file system, getting access to the directory and capturing what counts the most. This device is 240 gigabytes. Capturing the whole thing in a technological mode can take over a month, maybe even more. So uh, my job would be to minimize uh, the uh, target of that capture that we need to get and do our best to improve the quality of the read. So let's find out how this is done and uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you wanna support this channel, check the link in the description uh, and sign up for the Patreon. Everybody who signed up, I wanna thank you. Uh, your help is greatly appreciated and all the money that we get from there is gonna go right back into the channel, purchasing new tools, doing reviews of new things. Uh, some of the things I already picked up uh, that I wanted to go into uh, probably next week. Things that can help you uh, boost productivity, a couple of things that can make your life a lot easier. So check it out and uh, enjoy the show. Inside of this Kingston device we have this standard looking Fison uh, generic unit. This is based on Kingston controller. If you look underneath the microscope, even though it says Kingston other numbers CP332388 this is in fact uh, Fison 3111 with that being so uh, we will be using PC3000 in order to solve this case in order to obtain access uh, to the data from it so to do that we don't necessarily need to use uh, uh, the main port 0 on the portable we can use any other port which is uh, definitely has less uh, features on but since this is a SATA interface uh, device we don't need anything special so uh, port 0 can be spared for something more delicate so we're gonna need to connect the unit to PC3000 this is what the utility looks like if we power on the device we get um, 70 to 80 milliamps consumption the device does come up into ready state eventually if we were to uh, explore Kingston Fison A400 what do we see 4 some reason the device drops into a safe mode automatically now to save this video some time, I already had gone ahead and uh, removed both memory components thinking that maybe we have a um, potential break off between connection and it's not that, we don't have any bad connections. So the NANDs had been confirmed and tested uh, and rebolt and remounted. It only leaves me with the option of uh, working with this device through uh, the utility and um, if we had a breakout if we had the break in the connection the utility would not be able to assist and the reason for that would be because the utility in order for it to assist it needs to connect to everything right you cannot build a healthy translation using uh, one of the banks that are disconnected uh, your translation is not going to work even if you do manage to build somewhat of a um, process uh, by the time you get to extraction of the data, nothing will work. Let's fire up the utility and see what comes. 
uh, here it says firmware mode ROM uh, SSD is locked no SSD is in a safe mode yes I don't know exactly what is causing that I have no idea and from the circuit I can't really say what it could be um, based on what I'm seeing everything seems to be fine usually uh, in order for us to initiate a safe mode like that on the board itself there are gonna be some through holes that you can short and they will allow you to put the device into a safe mode we didn't even have to do it here it gives us a bunch of options for code names that we can use for different source uh, firmwares if we have a match it would be probably be wise to use that match let's just go with this one and see what happens uh, it's gone through uh, system info it's gone through read chips info looks like it's um, been able to detect information about the memory itself now because this is an initial start of the utility we didn't get a chance to run memory chip test yet it's something that I highly suggest you do on every single SSD case because again it's another way of uh, obtaining an extra clue if there is a disconnection between the memory chip and the board if you miss that part your efforts and your time that you spend waiting for the translation to be built is going to go to waste you need to pay attention to the patterns and uh, usually if you have a programmer uh, that can read NAND flash you can uh, double check the amount of uh, CEs that each chip has and make sure that that corresponds with what the utility is telling you test is completed we can now begin building a translator now at this point also we can now that our loader is in we can go into NAND flash chips and do a memory chip test that's what I would do before building any translation this test shows that we have two chips each has two channels this capacity times two times two is what are roughly uh, capacity of our device should be but because Kingston decided to set it up in such a way that it's uh, uh, slightly smaller <laughs> we have 240 gigs now uh, because both of the chips and both of the channels show up uh, now it is pretty much safe to assume that our only way for recovery here would be through creating a translator I would save to file um, saving to file will just save this thing right on onto uh, the disk if we ever need to reload the drive or turn the power off and turn it back on we don't have to go through that same rebuild process again uh, we can just load the translator up after the loader is uh, loaded as you can see loader took about maybe four or five minutes to uh, uh, upload which isn't a huge deal for a job that potentially will be taking days now be prepared that um, even though in some cases uh, building a translation and working with the device through technological mode like that can be fairly fast especially if you can get a list of files from your client and go after specifics of what they want and not try to capture the entire thing capturing the entire 240 gigabytes of data uh, would probably be really not a good idea uh, when devices do require this type of method most of the time they are in quite heavily damaged state so um, aside from reading it clean once uh, you will have to do extensive work on defects after uh, maybe we'll get to see what that's like if the translation doesn't take too long to build now while that's happening I wanted to cover a couple of other things during the reading of this device we we'll potentially will be coming across a lot of bit errors and if we do we need to figure out uh, a way to absorb them better to read them out better uh, there are several things that I've um, implemented uh, that try to maintain the device in a better stable reading uh, condition now this device uh, I picked up uh, somewhere on Amazon it's not a complicated thing but it is a heat sink with little fan it's USB powered 
doesn't soak up too much heat, but it does uh, cool the device off a little bit. If you feel like your device is running hot uh, when you're reading out those bad sectors, you may try something like this first. This is a fairly inexpensive preheating station. Uh, I picked it up on AliExpress, nothing fancy. Uh, this station here, it's about 53 Canadian dollars. At first I thought I'm gonna use it in this form. I toyed with the idea of, well, how am I gonna use it on NVMe devices? NVMe devices need to be connected through this adapter and that makes it very uh, awkward for them to be mounted onto something that's gonna heat up, right? Now, I've looked through um, my parts bin and I found this heat shield, which is a pretty solid chunk of copper. It's quite heavy. While uh, the translation is still building, I'll quickly demonstrate the concept. So imagine we have an SSD that is in this form. Um, what is it? 2280. We need to apply heat to it. First of all, uh, the thermal couple from the JBC station helped a bunch because it gives me an accurate reading, uh, independent, unbiased reading on what temperatures we're working with. My solution was that I would use this uh, copper block first. So it lays down onto an SSD. And let's say the SSD is connected to PC3000. The weight alone lays it flat down. Now, this part is one of the heating elements from inside of this box. There are two of them inside. And I would just stack it up on top just like that. Potentially, that's how it's going to sit. Now, this thing has, let's disconnect it. This thing has a, a controller up here, which can very precisely adjust the temperature to whatever you are setting it to be. And that stays quite consistent and accurate. And the distribution of heat uh, with the uh, uh, copper block that I use is pretty good because the block will have to get heated up first and I'm taking measurements using JBC um, that is probing between the copper block and the SSD into a thermal pad. So it's gonna give as accurate of a reading as it can get. Um, but we go back to the utility and the process is still building. Well, allow this to build and uh, we'll revisit it once the build is completed. All right, once the translator is built, we can uh, uh, begin imaging our device. So let's um, start the process. We can run image. You can see we got errors coming up, but it is reading uh, stuff. Maybe not flawlessly, but it does produce a lot of greens uh, and occasionally it does come out with these errors. Now, what we want to concentrate on at this point, not reading the entire thing, and over here we see that even the partition table is not coming up. Uh, if we look, the first sector seems to be good, but there is no information in it. So maybe when the device was failing, something got written to it uh, by mistake or it got erased somehow. Uh, at this point, we're going to need to uh, perform a little bit of imaging process, run, uh, analytics on it try to find uh, our partition table yay so it looks like it found something and um, let's um, see the first sector yeah first sector is red so it's it's locating the partition that's uh, taking up the entire size uh, we see that the map file uh, for the MFT is 1.6 gigs now if we create a sub map of all of the sectors that contain bit errors, marker errors, read errors, sectors that were skipped and unread, we will end up with 12 megabytes. 12 megabytes are incorrect in the uh, MFT. This was after running literally hundreds and hundreds of passes. Uh, when we're reading the device, we have an option to make a copy uh, of the object data or we have an same thing but through several passes so i would set up uh set several passes to like 99 count multiple multiple times 
So it got to, uh, with each pass, obviously it would be narrowing down the number of unread sectors. Each pass would bring a little bit um, of improvement, which we don't have to come back to later. But even then, it still had quite a bit of plateau. As we read this device more and more and more, we're left with more stubborn bad sectors that do not read out. And reading these 12 megabytes, I mean, we could add another three, four days, and this would only improve by like half a megabyte. At that point, I decided to um, start consolidating. From what we needed to grab, uh, we built a map. This map brought us down to 4.14 gigabytes. And again, if we uh, exclude everything that couldn't been read properly out of it, we end up with 380 megabytes of content. Overall, this uh, led to about 75% success. If we look at the problematic folder, uh, we got 3,750 files in it, uh, comparing to intact section, which has uh, 15, almost 16,000 files in it. I think we did pretty good with this uh, device and this case. Um, and I'm also glad that PC3000 was able to uh, handle this operation. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next episode.